Thanks for joining us. I'm Hwang Jie. You're tuned in to our special coverage of the Korea World Bank Symposium taking place as we speak in Seoul. Now, the theme is Achieving Hope, Innovation in Korean Education for a Creative Economy. The hope here stands for happiness of people through education. Around 300 education experts and researchers from Korea, the United States, Hong Kong and Singapore are taking part in the event that's hosted by the Korean Educational Development Institute and the World Bank. They're he here to exchange views on how to innovate education in order to foster the next generation of creative individuals. This symposium comes as Korea aims to share its achievements and experiences in education, which has been at the heart of the country's rapid economic growth over the decades. Education is considered a key way to end poverty and achieve economic development. And Korea is actually famous around the world for doing this. And this symposium also aims to develop education-related research. Now, President Park Geun-hye will be giving a congratulatory address shortly following a short welcoming speech by Korea's education minister, Hwang Woo-yeo. Well, after, and after that, World Bank President Tim Yong kim will give the keynote speech. And Kim here is expected to bring up issues related to the main problems facing current education systems and the global economy in general. Now, we'll um, s shortly go to the speech, congratulatory speech of the education minister. Let's take a look. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to other participants for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us at the Korea World Bank Symposium on Education Innovation. I'd like to especially thank uh, President Park Geun-hye and President Jim Yong kim of the World Bank for providing us with all the support so that uh, Korea and World Bank can conduct uh, joint studies in the area of education. Thank you once again. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, education is the biggest uh, driving force behind a nation's uh, economic development. In the shortest period of time, unprecedented in the world, Korea achieved national development through education. Therefore, Korea is a living testimony to this. The Republic of Korea is one of the leading countries in the world in terms of the level of education. And in the future, talented, uh, creative minds uh, will be the key leaders to bring about sustainable development for a country. Many advanced countries throughout the world are responding and making all-out efforts to create a creative economy by creating and nurturing creativity and imagination. In line with this global trend, Korea also needs to stand tall and take on the challenge to take our education to the le next level. The Korean government is committed uh, to provide a new education framework committed to nurturing and realizing education that brings happiness and nurtures creative talents for the future. Distinguished participants, creative economy and creative talent can only be fostered with a collaboration. Each and every member of our society needs to come together and join hands so that we can realize creative economy and seek future development for the nation. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the World Bank and many researchers who have taken time out of your busy schedules to be here with us. And I believe that all the participants have come and see eye to eye that uh, nurturing talented uh, creative minds in the future are critical for creating a creative economy. I believe that providing happy education that opens a new, bright uh, future is going to be our goal as we go forward. Thank you very much, and I continue to ask for your interest and support. And that was the welcoming speech of, of the Education Minister Hwang Woo-ya. And we will shortly, and that will follow, uh, that will be, and the President Park geun will be giving a congratulatory address shortly. Shortly, we'll connect live to the venues very soon. But just before we go to uh, the live coverage of the congratulatory speech, 
And now she's about to enter and give her speech. Honorable Kim Yong Kim, President of the World Bank Group, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend my gratitude to all of you for traveling distances to be here with us. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, many Korean research institutes, including Korea Education Development Institute, and also the delegates from the World Bank for preparing this event for us. Last December, I met uh, President Kim in Korea, and we concurred uh, that innovation and creativity are two important pillars for sustainable development. We've also agreed that for a creative economy, we also need to focus on education that helps to nurture creative talents. And uh, this symposium was put together based on that agreement and also to seek measures for education innovation to nurture creative talents. I hope that through this symposium, the World Bank experts and Korean research institutes can come together and pull their wisdoms together so that we can look back on the path that we have taken over the years and also find a new direction going forward for our education. Korea was a aid recipient country and has become a donor country. And uh, the driving force behind that uh, was uh, education. Even in dire conditions following the Korean War, parents of Korea did not give on spending on education for their kids. The Korean government introduced mandatory primary education starting from the 1950s, and uh, as we entered 1960s, we realized universal primary education. Since then on, we also made secondary education and vocational education more accessible and higher education is now more accessible to many. Now, accessibility and quality of our education is very high. Despite a tight government budget, we have not spared any effort in expanding education spending. As a result, education policies of Korea was, were developed in harmony with economic policies and have become an engine for driving national growth. Today, Korean students are attending primary, secondary, and higher education institutions, and uh, they are also showcasing good uh, scores in international education achievement tests. We believe that uh, these students have uh, become an important source for development for our society and for our nation. And uh, it also has created a virtual cycle as uh, the technologies and expert knowledge created by them are also being invested in our education. For example, passion and creative idea uh, that helped nurture the IT industry in Korea are now uh, being funneled into education in our schools so that we can better uh, enhance the quality of our education. However, as we heard in the era of creative economy in the 21st century, we also face many challenges and change for our education. Many students of Korea are under great stress because of excessive push for education and fears examination competition. And uh, we are only focusing on learning rather than focusing on creative problem solving. And this is not in line with the global trend. I believe that instead of focusing on who has more knowledge, we need to focus on creative minds and uh, imaginative ideas. And I believe that creative, creative ideas and imaginations will determine the future of a nation. Therefore, the success of a creative economy depends on whether or not we have a new education innovation model. We need to find creative ideas, and uh, we also need to nurture challenging spirits through our education, and that is only possible through education and innovation. We need to maximize hidden potentials of our students 
and instill innovative ideas and passion so that these talents can grow with converged capabilities. With that in mind, the Korean government is trying to design an education that uh, brings happiness to our students and also that helps to nurture our creative talents. We hope that our students can uh, receive education that is in line with their dreams and potential and also that helps to unleash their hidden capabilities and so that at the end of the day their talents can bear fruit in our society. Instead of just acquiring knowledge and techniques, we want to create an education that helps to unleash and realize creative potential of each and every student and also nurture the ideas of respect, responsibility, and cooperation. Education is also part of the aid program that uh, the Korean government is providing for developing countries. Based on its experience in the past, the Korean government is committed to provide quality education opportunities for developing countries' students. We have many different programs aimed at that. Last August, we joined the Global Education First Initiative of the UN and also joined the Global Partnership for Education. These are all part of our efforts to join the international community's endeavor to enhance the quality of education in developing countries. Next uh, May, in partnership with UNESCO, Korea plans to host a World Education Forum so that we can set uh, new education targets along with the international community. We will not only share our past experience, success secrets, but uh, also continue to collaborate with the international community so that we can create more success cases going forward. Based on our know-how in education, we are ready to accept best cases of education from advanced countries so that we can realize happy education and creative education going beyond the, edu the existing education paradigm so that we can contribute to developing not only Korea's education system but also the international education system. I hope that through this symposium, we can bring about uh, more more opportunities for our students to dream and also help them realize that dream. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank uh, all the staff members of the organizing committee for making this symposium possible. Thank you. And, and that was President Park Geun-hye giving her congratulatory speech at the Intercontinental Hotel, where the symposium is now taking place. After this, Jim Yong Kim, the World Bank president, will give his uh, speech, keynote speech, and as I said, it's going to be uh, uh, he's going to bring up issues related to the main problems facing current education systems and the global economy in general. He'll also touch upon, upon how innovation in education in Korea and around the world can promote creativity and scholastic achievements. He is now stepping, uh, heading toward the podium to give Thank the you keynote very speech. Much, uh, President Park, Honorable Minister. Wherever I go, I meet with leaders of countries and also so finance, uh, ministers of countries. I understand that Madam Park geun is uh, the president of the Republic of Korea, but not, also, not only that, has made a lot of effort so that Korea can uh, develop a top-notch education system in Korea. 
And I believe that that proves how much Korea uh, is committed to innovating its current education system. I believe that Korea's education system, as is, is excellent, but at the same time, to see that the Korean leadership is making all out efforts to further improve is just amazing. I was in Africa a few days ago, and for safety, peace, I believe that uh, many international communities have come together to bring about uh, peace and stability in Asia and also to eradicate Ebola virus. Uh, the international community has been making a lot of efforts. On my visit uh, back, I stopped over in Ghana, and Ghana has also put together for the first time in Africa a response team to eradicate Ebola virus. Nigeria, uh, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and other West African countries have made a lot of efforts in order to eradicate Ebola. However, we still need many more efforts. Ebola indeed is a big threat uh, for the international community. And for three African countries, it has dealt a serious blow. But not only for these three African countries, but I believe that for the global economy, the Ebola that virus has dealt a serious blow. Therefore, I believe that as we respond to this uh, virus, we also need to prepare ourselves to respond to future pandemics. So again, Ebola is afflicting and affecting three West African countries. However, we have other African countries that are free from Ebola virus. Uh, these are countries are growing really fast. These are also investing heavily for their society and they're open to the international community. According to the World Bank's uh, predictions, once uh, we believe that the West African countries will grow steadily and realize 5% growth next year, we have, I believe, South Korean companies also doing business in these countries. And I believe that along with Korean businesses and other international businesses, uh, they will be the driving force to turn the economies around. So humanitarian aid and also economic support needs to be provided uh, to many African countries. And I believe that this will be win-win for Korea as well as the African continent. We believe that African countries will grow very fast in terms of economy and education reform and uh, economic reform measures are being uh, drafted here in Korea. And last December when I was here in Korea, President Park Geun-hye invited World Bank and also allowed us this opportunity to put together the symposium. We also collaborated over the years with many education research institutes of Korea so that we can enhance creative creativity through education innovation. In the booklet for this conference, uh, we have included uh, World Bank's study results for education. The title is Creativity, Ingenuity, and uh, the Power of Creativity and Ingenuity for Creating Creative Economy. And uh, I believe that that study result can be very helpful in devising 21st century innovative education measures. Again, we believe that uh, Korea has achieved a lot over the years. However, I think that we need to go a little further and realize more. A French economist, bestseller, 21st century capitalism, was on, released, and he talks about in his book how there is inequality in the global economy. Economy, and we see some dispor disproportionate growth in the world economy. And he points out that there can be two factors that helps to drive economy and economic growth, that is, knowledge, distribution of knowledge, and also investment for education. A lot of international community focus on developing their economies. This is because during the past 70 years, many 
countries were many countries were able to eradicate uh, poverty thanks to income generation of course by generating more income I believe that we were able to provide more opportunity for education and also health care and that in turn enabled uh, education or economic development that embraces more in order to create uh, this economy that is embraces we are focusing on education development by two, till 2010 we are the World Bank had a goal to eradicate poverty and also to provide universal education and I think that these two goals are also in line uh, with uh, what the scholar has preached. I believe that in the rapid changing world of capitalism, Korea is uh, realizing many changes. And I think that it's also important to learn how uh, Korea made that possible. Regardless of age and gender, the Korean people have uh, benefited from the economic growth. I believe that human resources and talents in Korea have were nurtured and fostered to equip many skills and competencies. And I believe that the Korean government uh, introduced many different policies to enable these Korean talents to unleash their potential. And I believe that education definitely plays a very important role in a nation's economic development. I was born here in Korea, and I moved to the United States. And when I was 24 in 1984, I revisited I visited Korea as a researcher, I lived in Korea for four years, and at that time, I studied Korea's economic development. And I was able to learn many things, and I returned back to the U.S. and uh, wrote a PhD paper on Korea's healthcare system, and at that time, I was able to realize uh, the advantages or the merits of Korea. So again, to be back here, it brings me back all these good memories I had about Korea. Again, I want to highlight the fact that the experiences that I had back then really helped me to realize how Korea has achieved many development despite social and cultural differences. Uh, when I was uh, in, the, in Korea in the 80s, Korea was very new to me. Korea uh, was a country for my parents, mother country for my parents, but uh, I had to relearn uh, the Korean language when I came back from the United States in the 80s. But uh, I was able to realize the cultural heritage of mine and also my parents. And uh, when I was in the state, I also felt a stranger. But uh, coming back to the state, I was able to realize my root. And uh, also, I believe that it helped me to accept the dual identity that I had about myself and also realize where I stand. Uh, in this world, and openness was uh, something that I was able to acquire by traveling back and forth between the U.S. and Korea, and I learned to get used to and accustomed, accustomed to strange environments. And also I was able to pay, learn to pay attention to other voices and also put myself, put myself in the other's shoes to understand where other people come from. So again, I think that my experience, four-year experience in Korea in the 80s helped me to understand much more about people around me. Dr. Shirley Fukumo was one of the professors that taught me, and uh, she always encouraged me to think about what others want from me. Yes, I, I asked that same question even today. Again, I think that emotionally and also socially, uh, my experience in Korea helped me to become a better person. And 
I believe that uh, the demands expected of the Korean society was much higher, much daunting, and the manners, the etiquette uh, was much more complex here in Korea, and the language, the dialects. Uh, in Korea were much more complicated than uh, the situation in the U.S. And I believe that uh, all these complexities will help nurture Korean students to become more holistic talents. So again, I think that sense of pride, uh, tolerance, communicative skills, I think that these qualities can be nurtured in these circumstances. And I think that more, what is more important than just knowledge or cognitive skills is those values and those qualities, creativity, ingenuity, and accepting diversity and tolerance will be the key values that is required for the talents of the 21st century. Based on my experience, non-cognitive skills and cognitive skills are both important, and I believe that Korean talents, when they are equipped with these skills and competencies, can become a global leader. And as you can see from many international literatures, by combining and converging the non-cognitive and cognitive skills, we can also better nurture creative skills. And uh, when these two are brought together, people can address problems from a different direction, different perspective, and they can collaborate with others to solve problems ahead of them. Therefore, we believe that cognitive skills and non-cognitive skills needs to be nurtured simultaneously. And in order to maximize the benefits coming from economic growth, I believe that we need to nurture non-cognitive skills in the talents. The Korean government has invested heavily in education. I believe that by nurturing cognitive as well as non-cognitive skills, we can uh, maximize uh, ROI in our education. And I believe that also balancing the investment in education and uh, nurturing cognitive minds and non-cognitive minds will be very important. I believe that uh, we can better utilize human resources in Korea by uh, highlighting both cognitive and non-cognitive skills. We also need to focus on um, compensating for talented minds and creative minds. And uh, through this approach, I believe that Korean people can help maximize GDP and productivity and also play a role in uh, enhancing the quality of lives. IQ, of course, is an important indicator to gauge the level of intelligence of students. However, I believe that test scores may not only test scores are not only important uh, for our students but also for the entire eco economy. Therefore, uh, cognitive and non-cognitive education programs should also target nurturing IQ at the same time and at the same time nurturing EQ. We see many Korean students uh, doing superb jobs in international examination performance tests, and uh, many international communities are also making a lot of efforts to enhance their performances. And I believe that IQ and EQ are both important in the overall performance. And I think that utilizing knowledge and efficiency in a can be critical for a nation's economy. Organizational skills and reliability, along with work performance, are critical. Therefore, we need to focus both on cognitive as well as non-cognitive skills. Again, cognitive skills, uh, academic performance, and also work performance requires uh, hundreds of times of concentration and focus. And our conscientiousness is connected with uh, non-cognitive skills, and some scholars say this is passion. Again, uh, with drive and passion, this is something that helps uh, people to realize long-term goals. 
Chukuyama in line, Angela Duckworth. Uh, the scholars of Pennsylvania University say that pleasure is not the driving force for the uh, successful people, but all, but happiness and uh, passion. We believe that creative talents, when young, spend thousands of times in order to explore their area of interest with passion, and uh, through this effort, they realize breakthroughs. And I believe that passion and drive are critical, especially for Korea and Korean individuals. We have so many Korean youth that are having difficulties at the moment. And I think that we need to instill in them passion and drive. So these uh, youth, Korean youth, uh, need to be given opportunity to unleash their passion in the area of their interest. And also many research papers show that uh, non-cognitive skills also has positive impact on income level and also their uh, satisfaction of life. I believe that smartness or wisdom not is not uh, the only factor that uh, helps to make someone successful. We at World Bank also realized that emotional stability, reliability, sense of pride, all these non-cognitive skills are also crit critical for a successful talent, having sense of confidence, sense of pride, and other non-cognitive skills are critical and essential for their work performance and uh, academic performance and also it helps to enhance their income. Therefore, at uh, the World Bank, we are concentrating on nurturing non-cognitive skills in the future talents. We believe that creative talents and uh, productive talents can be fostered uh, by focusing more on non-cognitive skills. And non-cognitive skills also are critical in the driving innovation. Therefore, the World Bank is focused and committed to nurturing in a balanced way cognitive as well as non-cognitive skills. And we believe that uh, by introducing many different academic approaches, we can provide students uh, with many diverse options for education so that they can carry on with their interest and passion. We believe that uh, the Korean education reform initiatives will help uh, Korean government, the Korean government to nurture non-cognitive skills and uh, innovative minds in the, the Korean students. Therefore, I believe that Korean students are already getting top scores in their language skills and other uh, test tests. And I believe that it will also affect many Korean talents as they go forward. And also, uh, if you look at 2012 data, PISA Academic Performance Index shows that when it comes to creative problem solving, among all the participating countries, uh, Korean students over 15 years of age had the highest score when it comes to creative mind. Of course, there are many criticism about uh, fierce competition uh, in Korea. However, in order to survive in this uh, cutthroat competition, I believe that these skills will be critical going forward. And I believe that to enhance productivity and also to realize creative economy, uh, we need to focus on nurturing talented minds. However, there are some challenges that need to be addressed. I believe that the process or the academic system of today is creating too much stress for Korean students, and that is why many Korean students are losing interest in education, and that is also creating some social challenges. And because of uh, competition and uh, time required for studies, there are also psychological damages in mathematics and also language. Although Korean students came in fifth when it comes to their international performance, however, they also said that they were not happy with their studies and school life. I believe that cognitive skills can be nurtured at schools, and that is the case. However, they are losing the opportunities to enhance non-cognitive skills and technical skills. And uh, depending on their potential, we need to provide different options, different opportunities for students so that they can try out different things. In Korea, there are a lot of spendings going in for private education, and there is a lot of spending and expenditure on education. 
And uh, also, this has created some issues regarding education opportunity disparities, low income households cannot access uh, private education and therefore we have this vicious cycle of education disparity and also we have some barriers that uh, undermines utilizing talented minds in the working environment uh, we don't have that much opportunity for uh, youth uh, to unleash their creative ideas and also age and uh, age-based uh, merit system is problematic in Korea. For many years, according to a research, if you look at the Korean national soccer team, it says that uh, instead of their performance or skills, uh, for many years, uh, till 2012, uh, when recruiting national soccer team players, they only focused on age and also their educational background, as of the connections. However, that uh, cycle was broken in 2012 uh, for the World Cup Games, and uh, people were able to be recruited only based on merits and their performances. The Dutch uh, director, when recruiting football players, recruited uh, players only based on their merits and their performances instead of focusing on their uh, origin or their background or education background or, and age. Therefore, I believe that connecting all these networks, rather breaking all these ne networks and uh, connections will be critical in the giving more opportunities for the talented minds. So again, I think that this is also not only applicable for sports arena, but also for education. However, for businesses also, can CEOs make decisions without being hindered by different opinions from their subordinates? And also, in schools, can we provide education solely based on conscience? I think that gradually we see these differences. I think that we need to break those hierarchical structure, and I think that Korea should be at the vanguard of uh, that initiative. If you look at uh, Korean women's productivity and uh, passion, uh, it's really great. However, Korea is not fully utilizing this potential. There are more women graduates uh, than men graduates from universities. However, if you look at uh, economically active, wo ac active women, uh, it still stands around 50 or 60 percent, while uh, their male counterpart, uh, the figure stands up at about 78 percent. And also, the the OECD average uh, stands at 62 percent. So Korea's uh, economically active women uh, ratio is far less than the OECD average. And there is a gap of 16 percent uh, between uh, the number of uh, economically active Korean women and the average of OECD. Therefore, if you look at these figures, uh, we still need to uh, work out many other measures and policies to fully utilize women resources. And uh, Korea is gradually introducing many different policies to actually make that happen. And therefore, I believe that there has to be a balance between women and uh, male human resources. And by doing so, there is a research uh, study that says that we can enhance GDP by 0.5% every year. And if you look at Goldman Sachs study of 2003, by narrowing down the differences between men and women when it comes to economic opportunities, we can create more GDP going forward. And also, if you look at per capita GDP by 2020, we can also increase it by more than 5 percent than uh, the forecast uh, that is already out there. In 2012, if you look at the average age of women that are economically viable uh, it was about 37.4 percent uh, compared to their male counterpart. And uh, also, if you look at uh, female executives in Korea, it was far lower than uh, Singapore and other countries. And uh, according to many research papers uh, that are avail made available from think tanks, 
uh, also the Korean uh, women in the uh, boardrooms are far lower. And that was Kim Yong Kim, the president of the World Bank, giving his keynote speech here at, uh, at the Korea World Bank Symposium here in Seoul. We will bring you more updates during our next newscast at noon Korea time. This has been Hwang Jia. Have a great day and thanks for watching.